morning, everyone. Uh, House Democrats will continue to work with President Biden to create an economy that works for everyday Americans to lower costs, to continue our fight for better paying jobs, safer communities, and of course, to defend democracy and fight for reproductive freedom. Consistent with our objective to continue to put people over politics, uh, President Biden and the administration released a budget early this week that will do at least three important things. It will lower costs for everyday Americans and build upon the work that has already been done to drive down the high price of life-saving prescription drugs for millions of Americans. It will continue to build an economy from the middle out and the bottom up that is focused on growing the middle class and all those who aspire to be part of the middle class throughout America. Perhaps most importantly, President Biden and House Democrats are focused on protecting and strengthening Social Security. Notwithstanding what the former president down in Mar-a-Lago had to say about Social Security and Medicare, these are not entitlement programs. Social Security and Medicare are earned benefits that the American people work hard for throughout their entire lives and pay into with the promise that as they become older Americans, they'll have access to Social Security and Medicare so they can live a life with dignity and respect. Social Security and Medicare are quintessential parts of the American dream. Donald Trump and the extreme MAGA Republicans want to end Social Security and Medicare as we know it. It's not a secret. They have said it publicly over and over and over again, including this week. And that will establish a clear contrast between President Biden and House Democrats who are gonna fight to protect and strengthen Social Security and Medicare and extreme MAGA Republicans who wanna take these things away, just like they ended Roe v. Wade and reproductive freedom for tens of millions of Americans all across America. If it can happen to Roe v. Wade, then of course the extreme MAGA Republicans will continue to try to detonate things in the United States of America that we believed were untouchable. And we're going to push back aggressively against it. Questions? How do you want the Senate to handle it? Well, the House passed the bill uh, in a decisive and bipartisan fashion, and it's now appropriate for the Senate to evaluate the merits of the legislation. I don't support a ban on TikTok. The legislation did not ban TikTok. It's simply a divestiture of TikTok so that this social media platform can be owned by an American company that would protect the data and the privacy of the American consumer from malignant foreign interests like the Chinese Communist Party. I agree with Senator Coons that if my Republican colleagues actually care about America's broad and comprehensive national security interests, that the most significant thing that House Republicans can do is to bring the bipartisan, comprehensive national security bill, which will provide support for our Democratic allies in Israel, Ukraine, and in the Indo-Pacific, 
to counteract the Chinese Communist Party and at the same time provide humanitarian assistance to civilians in Gaza and other parts of the world who are in harm's way through no fault of their own. If my Republican colleagues care about the broadest set of national security challenges that the American people face, the most significant thing they can do is to put the bill on the floor for an up or down vote. And we all know that it would pass with substantial Democratic support. Who am I to tell the Senate what to do in terms of its own agenda? Uh, you know, there's a process. They pass bills, send it over to us for consideration. We pass bills, send it over to them. Uh, the ball is now in the court of the senators, and I trust uh, Leader Chuck Schumer. Sir, you, you Uh, Speaker, uh, Johnson continues to maintain that he understands the importance of passing the national security bill and funding uh, the Ukrainian effort, which has been brave and valiant in pushing back against Russian aggression. We cannot allow Vladimir Putin to succeed in Ukraine, as it will undermine America's national security interests and that of the West. NATO and democratic allies throughout the world. We'll see what happens. I think the clock is ticking and we have to get the bipartisan national security bill over the finish line before we leave town next Friday, March 22nd, before we leave town. It's reckless to do otherwise. As I indicated in my statement, uh, there were very principled objections and concerns raised by members with respect to timing and process, uh, and I have no disagreement with them. Thank you, Mr. Azir. Now, if ByteDance does not divest from TikTok, uh, the app could be banned in the U.S. Uh, so what's your message uh, to American citizens whose jobs may be at risk and have loved us and who heavily rely on TikTok? I do not support a TikTok ban. Well, there are ongoing conversations right now at the appropriations level uh, to try to see if an agreement can be reached. So I'm going to defer uh, to Rosa DeLauro, who I've got full faith and confidence in, in terms of her ability uh, to navigate the challenges that remain in all of the outstanding appropriations issues. And things are moving in the right direction, and hopefully we'll get resolution well in advance on the UNRWA issue, on a whole host of other issues before uh, next Friday. Go back to this side. Right there. support the president's uh, perspective that he's going to continue, as is his con constitutional responsibility, to take care that the laws are faithfully executed. And as he's indicated, he's going to continue to support Israel's right to defend itself. And our commitment, of course, to Israel is ironclad, while at the same time making sure that we can get the hostages out and surge humanitarian assistance in so that we can help the innocent civilians 
in Gaza who are in harm's way through no fault of their own, as well as civilians in other theaters of war across the country, across the world. I don't support a TikTok ban, and I have every confidence in the world that whatever the course of this legislation takes as it goes over to the Senate, uh, that TikTok will remain available uh, to those who continue to enjoy the platform at this very moment. No, I wasn't concerned about that in advance of President Biden's State of the Union address, and I'm certainly not concerned about it now. President Biden, as they say down south, showed up and showed out. He gave an incredible performance. It was strong. It was serious. It was substantive. It was filled with energy at a high level from the beginning through the middle and all the way through the very end. And... When I've been back at home, as well as on the road, the enthusiasm that I've seen for President Biden has increased significantly. It was high before amongst many base Democratic voters, but it has increased significantly in discernible ways subsequent to President Biden's strong performance at the State of the Union. Yeah, I would take issue with the, politely, with the notion that there are dueling discharge petitions. One has 15 signatures. The other is about at 180. That, that, that's not dueling discharge petitions. It's a reaffirmation that the only clear path is to put the bipartisan, comprehensive Senate-passed bill on the House floor for an up or down vote, and it will pass overwhelmingly with Democrats and Republicans. That is the only path forward. And this week further validated that dynamic. We cannot allow Ukraine to be overrun by Russia because what will happen is that American lives are likely to be on the line unless we were to believe that if putin wins in ukraine he stops there when he didn't stop in georgia and he didn't stop in crimea breaking news he's not stopping in ukraine if he's allowed to be successful and in that neighborhood it's filled with nato allies including Poland, which is one of the reasons why President Duda was still sh so strongly supportive of making sure we continue to support the Ukrainian effort because democracy and the free world are on the line against autocracy and tyranny. It's time for my House Republican colleagues who believe that supporting Ukraine is the right thing to do to break with the pro-Putin MAGA extremists who are ascendant in their conference and partner with us to do the right thing and support an up or down vote on the national security package that was passed by the Senate.
the effort uh, to convince the American people that the January 6th insurrection was not a violent riot inspired by the former president as part of an effort to halt the peaceful transfer of power is just another extreme MAGA Republican political stunt. At what point will my Republican colleagues choose to actually focus on issues that matter? From the very beginning of this Congress, House Democrats have made clear, we're going to find bipartisan common ground on any issue with our Republican colleagues whenever and wherever possible in order to solve problems for hardworking American taxpayers. We need less chaos in Washington, D.C. and more common sense. And I don't know why my Republican colleagues continue to put political stunts over the American people. We should be putting people over politics. That's what House Democrats are going to continue to do. Focus on affordability, lowering costs, being able to access affordable housing, addressing the challenges at the border, and fixing our broken immigration system. These are the issues that we should be focused on. The January 6th situation was a violent insurrection that the American people could see and watch in real time with their own eyes. This political stunt in trying to convince the American people that the violent insurrection was legitimate political discourse or a normal tourist visit is a joke. It's embarrassing. What is wrong with these extremists? You keep losing elections. It's not working. Partner with us. Let's solve problems on behalf of the American people. Thank you, everyone. Oh, last question. Sorry. But everything that the president said during the State of the Union address and his general perspective that what we have to do is make sure that Hamas is decisively defeated. It's a brutal terrorist organization. And unless we defeat Hamas, there is no possibility for a just and lasting peace. But at the same time, we have to make sure we get the hostages out and humanitarian assistance in to Gaza decisively. Thank you.